There are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen. True for life, true for markets. The truly young and the striving, however, are always restless for every opportunity, whether daily or decadal, to amass their fame and fortune. Hello everyone, I'm your host Ramesh Damani, welcoming you back to a brand new episode of Wizards of the Street. With grit, imagination, and a drum full of daring, my guest overcame his modest roots and transformed himself from a programmer to a player in the capital markets, all within 20 years. Still young and at 50, and in his first TV appearance, let's hear his inspiring story. Please help me welcome Director at Home Securities, Amal Parekh. Amal, welcome to the Wizards. Thank you so much, Ramesh ji. It's a pleasure to have you finally, uh, Amal, on the show. Amal, we're in 2023. Let me take you back to 1989. Where were you and what was your first job? So I started with uh, Vice and Shares and Securities and uh, started a job uh, getting 2,500 rupees a salary. And uh, I was a operator, computer operator. At that point of time, computer was a new thing for a stock market. And uh, I got a job because of my uh, computer knowledge. Why did you choose a computer job in the stock market as opposed to a programming job which you were qualified for? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I got a job uh, uh, where I was studying uh, for the faculty and I didn't take that job. Uh, Though it paid more, I told. Yeah, absolutely. So it was, I was getting a more salary over there. But uh, I wanted to come to the stock market. You made 2,500 rupees at that time, which is a modest sum even by that standard of that era. Sure. Uh, you're a kid in Ville Parle. Uh, what was your definition of being rich at that time? Oh, one, one and a half crore, that's it. Would uh, have like, made you happy? Absolutely happy, super happy. With 2,500 <laughs> also, I was very happy that I, I don't have to ask any money from my dad. Correct. But you were a kid traveling now back and forth by local train, I assume, from Absolutely. Ville Parle to yeah. uh, your job uh, assignment. Uh, first, professionally, did programming help you to become a better stock picker? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my journey uh, started uh, in 91 and uh, uh, around 98, 99, we, we saw the uh, boom in tech. That is where I invested a lot of money in technology and uh, made a lot of money in 2000 uh, also. I exited uh, very well in 2000. So, it, yes, it really helped me. And it helped you understand helps, the companies better? Absolutely. <clears throat> and still it helps me in a in, uh, lot of, uh, uh, till now. Uh, Amal, uh, while you've clearly understood technology companies, someone who understood you at a very young age was uh, a mentor you had. Tell me who he was and how did he influence you? So, uh, my mentor was uh, Rakesh Junjunwala. You were servicing so I, him as a broker, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, we always call him Bhaiya. Yes, of course. Everyone does. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, he, uh, he was a father figure, mentor, guide. And uh, he, he has influenced uh, in uh, all the aspect, uh, not only the stock market, in, in my life also. You're not a I'll drinker. Uh, yeah. That's one I, thing I'm, you didn't learn from him, luckily. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a teetotaler. Yes. yes. So, yeah, I learned a lot of things. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll stick to the stock market where uh, uh, how to invest, uh, buy and hold, and, uh, you know, uh, think for a long term rather than short term. In trading also, a lot of uh, trading style, uh, I, I uh, replica uh, Rakesh Bhaiya with a st very strict stop loss only trade with a lot of liquidity, otherwise uh, just uh, pass. Don't be a leader in the trading market, be a follower yeah, in the trading so market. Yeah, that's, so that's we called as uh, never be an uh, engine, always be a bogey. Bogey. And uh, cutting the stop losses, famous axiom was vadare vadare levanu, ghatare ghatare pichwanu. Absolutely, pichwa absolutely. Which means buy on strength, sell on weakness. Absolutely. Correct. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, Rakesh influenced you for the course of your career. Uh, but the first stock that uh, magnified your income and made you perhaps more wealthy than you were was Visual Soft. Absolutely. Tell me the story of Visual. 
So, uh, Visual Soft was a devolved issue, <coughs> and uh, uh, I I showed the company to Rakesh Bhaiya, and uh, we like the company. So, uh, first Bhaiya invested, and along with him, I also invested uh, in a company. Uh, quarter on quarter, they were doing uh, fantastic. Obviously, it was a tech boom. In the end, uh, they were they were trying to make some uh, black box uh, for the car. Correct. Uh, and they were never successful in that. But uh, yeah, for me, the journey was uh, great, uh, and I exited uh, also on time. So you bought it at fifty hundred rupees, which it was probably uh, around listing time, and you sold it at what price for the record? So I sold between eight hundred to twelve hundred some. And After then ten I, times your money. Yeah. Yes, and then I sold at eight thousand rupees. Took the entire ride through. Absolutely. And did Rakesh, uh, you followed Rakesh in that? No, no, no. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know when he sold, but he he was uh, like he exited quite early. Okay, but uh, Aman, let me ask you this point. We often say as investors that time in the market is more important than timing the market. But you've had an exceptional ability to stop or smell market tops and bottoms. 2008, uh, the world was reeling under global financial crisis, and yet it was your best year uh, possible. First, tell me, how do you sense or how do you smell a top that's coming? Because you saw it in 2000, you saw it in 2008. What are the clues? So uh, generally, uh, there are many, but uh, I'll, I'll stick to a couple of them, <laughs> which are very important. So uh, and specifically in 2008, uh, uh, U.S. market uh, went down. We were not falling. Uh, market was holding up. Uh, uh, there was a lot of leverage in the market. Valuations were super expensive. Some of the stocks went uh, uh, almost 100 uh, percent from August uh, 2007 level, and that is where I thought that uh, look. Uh, this this can't uh, sustain. The trigger was uh, there was a large uh, uh, IPO, uh, uh, Reliance Power. Reliance Power, yes. Yeah, and uh, <coughs> the grey market price was almost uh, hundred percent premium. At that time, every guy uh, on the street wanted to invest uh, in our power, and probably uh, uh, banks, institution, insurance, everybody wanted to invest. Easy money. Easy money. And that is where, uh, you know, uh, I checked with my uh, 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 retail brokers. Every guy took out their credit, which they had in, in the broking account. And because markets were going up and they were doing well. Yeah, they were, they were uh, <laughs> making a lot of money with the broker. But they wanted that money to be uh, applied in the IPO of our power. Obviously, because they were seeing the price difference between the IPO and the grey market price. That is where uh, I thought that if market goes down little from here, then it will be a chaos because people will not have the margin to uh, pay and then they have to unwind their position. And that is what exactly happened. Market went down a little and then people had to unwound the position forcefully because they didn't have money. Absolutely. So you got out successfully in 2008, but you had an unc uncanny ability, Amal, to come back at the bottoms. It's not that you were permanently bearish or that you decided, I made my money, I'm getting out of the markets. Uh, how do you stop, uh, how do you spot bottoms? So uh, exactly, a lot of uh, 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 things are opposite <laughs> to what it is uh, on the top. So people don't want to talk about equity. Uh, the the volume happens, huge volume happens, huge delivery happens, and the stock price does not fall. Then a lot of time, exchange unwind uh, position for broker or for clients, not uh, because of the margin they have. Last people can't pay the margin, so the That's correct. position is And that up. is what exactly, uh, uh, you know, uh, the bottom uh, forms. Obviously, uh, uh, the valuations uh, always have to be seen. And uh, in 2009, we all knew the valuations were very, very cheap. It's, it's just about nobody had a daring to buy an equity. And uh, we, we bought it like in 2009 also. So you've told me about the story of Rakesh who's helped you throughout your career. Have there been other mentors who've helped you? Because you clearly needed them. You were just a kid out of Villa Parler. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I missed, I would uh, say in 2008, 
the Amit Goyla and Puneet Bhatia. Partner at Rare Enterprises. Yes, yes and uh, Puneet Bhatia, TP, head of uh, TPG uh, India. They both explained me what is a, a subprime problem and uh, what is a housing crisis in US. And that helped me a lot uh, besides uh, our power uh, uh, trigger. Crisis. Other than that, uh, I have two more mentors. Uh, one is uh, R.K. Damani ji and uh, one is uh, Ashish Pant. So, How did they help you? Give me a quick summary of uh, what so you learned from them. Ashish, uh, Ashish taught me, uh, he is like a teacher. When you sit with him, he'll go on teaching you uh, every, every now and then. And uh, uh, he, I, I always call him Guruji only. And, and R.K.? RK is, is we call as a bhai saab, but uh, uh, it, it's again, uh, uh, every minute what you spend with him, you learn something uh, from him. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And you were lucky to, I mean, the odds of you meeting them are pretty remote Absolutely. from 1989. And yet you service them and they became your friends and your mentors, right? Absolutely. Correct. It's amazing. Uh, how do you deal with losses? I mean, the, Markets teach you, humble you almost every single day. Uh, I'll tell you a very uh, uh, funny thing. I get relieved when I book my losses. I'm fresh when I book my losses. And I have no emotions. That is what I've learned from Rakesh Bhaiya. True trader. True trader. Huh. And uh, I think uh, same goes with uh, Mr. Damani also. Both are uh, uh, very, very quick in uh, booking their losses. Uh, that's what I've learned from them and I, I continue to do that uh, till now in my trading. Amal, there are two different mindsets at work here. Investing requires a lot of patience and trading requires being trigger happy. Is it possible to have both of them? Yeah, I'm, I'm running it uh, live uh, since years. Is it hard or do you fight yourself or does trading become investing? No, I don't think so. It's hard. Uh, it's just a mindset <coughs> that you have to uh, train your mind to do, uh, do so. Uh, one, of the, one of the stock which I bought, uh, Hindustan Aeronautic, uh, Jubilant Food, I bought it and it went down by 25%. I still added that stock because I was convinced on the fundamentals. So, so the it does not. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, finish your so point. So it does not uh, shake me on the, when I'm doing an investment. Probably if I would have bought Jubilant Food or a Hindustan Aeronautic in trading, I would have uh, sold in 2%, 3% losses. So when you initiate a trade, you tell yourself this is the investment bucket, this is the trading bucket. How does that work? How do you segregate the two? It's very simple. Anything which I buy in Amal Parik and Viral Parik, I always, it's an investment. Okay. And I have my uh, partnership <coughs> firm and anything which I do over there, it's a trading. So I keep it very simple. So you make a conscious decision that this is an investment, so I'm putting in my personal name. That's correct. Correct. So Amal, uh, every uh, stock market person, a lot of stories about the ones that they got right, the ones that got away, or the ones that bothered them. Share with me some of your success, the stock that you're proudest of picking. Uh, or the one that, you know, had mud on your face? So, I, I'm, uh, uh, I have a couple of them, but I'll talk about one, which is a Dalmia cement. Uh, I bought Dalmia cement uh, around uh, 210, 20, in, I think 14, 2014. Uh, uh, typically, uh, the market cap was 1,700 crore, debt was 4,000 crore. And... Uh, what did you see in them? It's, it's just that uh, the visibility of uh, EBITDA, uh, I, I could see like 400 to 500 crores of an EBITDA per annum. You have a 1,700 crores market cap and you have an EBITDA of 400 crores. It's amazing. No brainer. No brainer. How many uh, times X did you make in that? Oh, so uh, today price is around 1,900. Uh, uh, X split, it X becomes 3,800. Right. Yeah. So 200 to 3,800, almost 20 bagger. That's right. Uh, lovely. Uh, Amal, what we'll do is uh, we go bankrupt if you don't take commercial breaks. We'll take a break, sure. come back, and then we'll ask you about your more painful losses also in the stock sure, market. Sure. Let's take a break, come back and chat some more with Amal Parikh of Ohm Securities. In the Dead Poet Society, Robin Williams whispers, if you listen real close, you can hear them whisper their legacy to you.
Go on. Lean in. Listen. You hear it. Carpe. Carpe diem. Seize the day, boys. Make your lives extraordinary. Continuing our conversation on his own extraordinary journey with Amal Parik of Om Securities. Amal, welcome back. We yeah. talked about uh, making lots of money in Dalmia Bharat. Tell me something when you had mud on your face. So, uh, I invested. I, I had a lot of uh, bad companies also in, in the portfolio. One of them was, uh, uh, is still there, uh, Dish TV. So, I invested <coughs> when, when the company had a debt of 2,200 uh, crores. Uh, Today, they have zero debt. They have repaid the debt. But because of uh, uh, promoter uh, doing a uh, over leverage in their other businesses... Corporate governance. Yeah. And they had to uh, pledge this equity. And uh, I think uh, the issue is in the court right now. But it's very painful for the minority investor. So, uh, yeah. It uh, bothers you. It bothers me because a lot of uh, my friends, family has also invested uh, in, in Dish TV. Yeah, but so, they've written a lot of winners, so they're okay. But Amal, let's stick to the topic of money and let's stick to winning. Uh, rumor has it, rumor has it that you're a dollar billionaire. Is that true? <laughs> so, I never calculate <laughs> my wealth. Uh, really? My you want to tell Viral not, that? <laughs> my wife does not know my uh, wealth. And, uh, yeah, but uh, I would, I would uh, say in uh, one, one line what uh, Rakesh Bia always used to say, I have far more money than I need and I have far less than people think. But what impresses me about you, Amal, is that I've known you for a number of years now. Uh, I know in 2008, you were one among the largest taxpayers in this country, you were honored, so. But I've seen you transform yourself from a computer operator to a broker liaison, to a trader, to an investor, to, as I call you, a player in the uh, stock market. But you're still not happy. You also want to do overseas investing. What is that bug? Yeah, so in 2008, uh, when I was sitting <laughs> on 80% cash, uh, I realized that uh, uh, I've, I've lost 30% of my wealth because I always calculate my wealth in dollar. And uh, that is where I realized that uh, without any of my mistake, I've lost 30% of because my wealth. Because the rupee depreciated. Absolutely. Rupee, uh, rupee depreciated 30%. And uh, that, that actually bothered me. I started uh, looking at global markets, uh, reading books, uh, reading more about uh, what actually happened uh, in US, what was the crisis. And uh, uh, looking at currencies, how the currency trades. And I felt that uh, I should uh, start uh, uh, trading over there. So uh, obviously, early, early years, we used to do a paper trading. Uh, you know, and and uh, uh, and then I thought that uh, it's it's the same. Trading is everywhere. It's same. Uh, obviously, it takes lot of time because uh, currency markets and global markets are always 24 open. Twenty-four by seven. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is where uh, uh, I moved for like uh, two three years to Dubai to uh, trade uh, uh, global markets. Tell me a trade that stands out in that. Uh... Period. Okay, there uh, I traded in uh, Japanese yen and uh, I bought some uh, call uh, which which was a 10 cents to a dollar. Pretty much what they did in the global financial crisis, John Paulson buying these out of the money uh, yeah. put options. Absolutely. Uh, I bought a call options uh, on, on uh, uh, dollar yen and it On went... saying what the dollar would, uh, yen would go up? So yen will depreciate. Yen will depreciate, yes. okay. And uh, typically, it uh, uh, depreciated a lot. And my 10 cents uh, uh, went up to 20 bucks. I sold it around 17 bucks. Amal, you're 50. You've already accomplished a lot. What's in it for the next 10 years for you? What, what are you looking forward to? What wakes you up at night? So, uh, I want to, I've, I've invested my five to six years uh, in uh, algo trading. Uh, uh, some of the, some of the, Strategies are always uh, already live, and uh, I want to be a great algo <laughs> trader. I've given, uh, I have uh, uh, trading skills. I have experience of like 25 years of trading, and I have a uh, knowledge of technology. What so by doing that, you put that in a formula, and the formula executes the trade for you. Absolutely. But the formula is the brains behind it. Absolutely. And you think this can uh, outperform active investing over a period of time? 
Uh, 100%, uh, it, it can't uh, outperform in a big way, but uh, uh, I think I can uh, see a lot of uh, asset class. Today, sitting in India, I can't see uh, all the asset class, as I said, it, the, the Japanese are and the Thai baht, the you know, Angolan currency, whatever. I, I, that, that's uh, the change what I want to have it. Uh, sitting in India, sitting uh, only investing in India, I can trade all this market through my algo. That's, that's the uh, idea. You know, Amal, uh, part of our show is not only doing algo, but also doing a rapid fire round, okay? Sure. So are you ready for a rapid fire Absolutely. round? Absolutely. Okay, great, let's get you started. Uh, a promoter you admire the most? The Free most. Cement. Uh, Mr. Bangat? Yes. Any particular reason? I think the uh, the, the promoter gives uh, <laughs> everything what he does, everything in uh, their annual report. So if you read their annual report, it's amazing. Transparency? Absolutely. A Wall Street personality that you admire the most? George Soros. If you could invite any three people home for dinner, I know you don't drink, so I would say you're not going to go to a bar, <laughs> but you could invite three people to drink. For dinner, who would they be? I think uh, 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 Mr. Modi. Prime Minister. Yes. Okay. Uh, George Soros. <laughs> okay. And uh, Warren Buffett. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing that you learned from Rakesh Junjunwala? Buy and hold. Amal, you have three lovely young children, I know. Uh, Rith, Ashi, and Dhrava, two daughters and a son. If they came to you, uh, Baba, tell us something about markets that we should remember the rest of our lives. What would that be? I would uh, say that uh, invest in equity, 100%. And uh, if you don't know the market, invest through uh, SIP in a mutual fund. Okay. Uh, what would you rather do? Would you rather read a screen or would you rather read a balance sheet today? My heart says to see the screen, but my uh, size of uh, portfolio tells me to see the balance sheet. So I'm focusing more on balance sheet <laughs> since last three years. But my, if you ask my heart, it's always says a screen. So more fundamentals, less technicals, though your heart is in technicals. Correct. Correct. Fair enough. Uh, would your heart be spending a weekend in the Hamptons in America or a weekend in Alibag? Hampton of India in Alibag. <laughs> OK, <laughs> well said. Uh, I want to ask your opinion on uh, the following asset classes. What do you think they will be over a period of one year, let's say. The Sensex, higher or lower? Higher. Uh, oil, higher or lower? Lower. Uh, Tesla, higher or lower? Higher. Bitcoin, higher or lower? Lower. China, higher or lower? Higher. Dow Jones, higher or lower? Higher. That's pretty much a bull market you're making, a case for Absolutely. a bull market continuing, Amal. Always bull, sir. Shakespeare put it best. There's a tide in the face of men, which taken at the flood leads to fortune. Amal, you've clearly navigated well. The winds tied in the turbulence of the last street. Thank you, happy birthday, and thank you for being a part of Wizards. Thank you so much, Ramesh ji. Thank you so much.